Welcome back to The Coding Circus. Today what we're going to look at is a different way uh, to add in actions. So we don't have to use the um, add action every time and worry about uh, whether or not we put it into different pools or we had it, didn't have it in the different pools. We can actually set up a sequence of actions to happen in order one step after another after another. And then the other thing we're going to look at today is something called a mix. And effectively, this is a way of creating your own kind of actions. So right now, built into VizAct is this ability to move from one state to another. Uh, like a move to block tells uh, the block to move from one position to another position, and it takes an argument of a certain speed. But sometimes we want to kind of create some different kinds of effects and have different kinds of things to change. And we don't want to be limited to exactly what Vizard has built in. And then there are some actions that Vizard hasn't built in at all. And one of those we're going to look at today is changing color. Uh, Vizard has no uh, quick way of changing color from one color to another other than just saying, hey, here's the color red. Bang. Now make it orange. There's no transition. So we want kind of a transition action to occur in that. So let's dive into our code. And take a look at some actions here. So first, uh, I'm going to go and throw in a couple of the things that we normally do. And I'm going to create a box. We're only going to deal with one box today. So I have all my imports, uh, I have my connect, viz connect configure, I have my world, and then I added in my box. It's going to be green, it's going to be positioned a little bit in front of me at 003, and it's going to have the same size that we normally have. So let's create a mix. So we're going to call this one color to white, and remember, so, um, we probably should get back into, into doing this. Uh, I fall out of habit because sometimes I, I think about other languages, but really the standard in Python is using this snake case where we have words separated by uh, underscores rather than camel case. We have words separated by cap, uh, capitals. So this act mix is the method we're going to look at. And I have to have the box's color first. So I'm going to get the box's color because a vids mix is going to, especially when we're talking about color, is going to go from one color to another. I could start at any color I wanted. Uh, I could start at orange if I wanted to and go from orange to white. But if the box starts out as green and I start out as orange, it's going to switch over to orange instantaneously as soon as this action is occurred and then transition over to white. So what we really want to do is get the box's current color and I'm going to switch it to white. And Viz has that built in uh, constant for me. I wanted to tell it to take two seconds to do and I can put in decimals if I want to. And then there's this thing called interpolation. So um, interpolate, I should say. This tells the computer how the action is supposed to happen. Is it supposed to kind of start easy and then end strong? Or is it supposed to just kind of ease into it and then start normal? So we have different options here. And this is really just kind of a look that you have to decide what you want for your action. So we're going to do ease out strong. Okay. So it's going to ease out strong, whatever that means. It's more of a visual thing. Then I'm going to create another mix. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's see this one happen. Let's create um, a box add action.
and let's just add in the action color to white. And let's run it. Oops, did I misspell something? Let me see. I N T E R P O L A T E dot Oh, I wrote equals. Oh, it is. I forgot viz act. Viz act dot ease out strong. Sorry about that. It's a viz act constant. So here we go. Relaunch. Mm, what did I put? Mix is something. Did I write viz act mix? I got something. Let me check to see what I did wrong here. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I forgot to add in the actual action. So the color to white is a mix where we're just telling the computer how do we switch from one color to another. It's not an action yet. To make it an action, we have to tell viz act what we're going to do is change the color. And then we have to describe how we're going to change the color. So we're saying vizact.method dot color color to white. So the color to white is the mix. Then we're building the action using vizact.method dot color. We're saying which method of the thing that we want to affect. And then finally we have to add the action to our box. And I made the time. Uh, a little bit longer. We're going to make it 20 rather than two seconds because it happens really fast if we do two seconds. So let's take a look when we run this and we'll see the box starts as green and you can see it slowly fades to that white color. Okay, so it switches from one thing to the other. If we wanted to have it switch back, color to green, well, we could do exactly the same thing. Take this whole method definition here for our mix definition. And all we're going to do is change it from viz.white to viz.green. Now, there's a problem with this. Box.getColor will go back to its original color. It does not know that the box is currently white. It knows that the box was current was set to green, and that's all it knows. That's what the get color does. Let's take a look at that. And I want you to see what happens. When we run this, we're going to add our action to. So we created our second action based upon our second mix. And we're going to notice that change, it goes to white. Takes 20 seconds. And then it didn't transition. It just popped to green because the box's get color method is still green. It does not switch the actual color of the box. So after we've changed its color once, we really need to go from what we changed it to to the new color. So I'm going to say viz.white to green. Maybe I'll have this all happen faster. Let's do this over, let's do this over 10 seconds rather than 20 seconds. So it's going to start at its original color, which is green. It's going to go to white and then it's going to start at white and then go to green. Again, if we say box dot get color, that still has the value of green. It does not know it changed to white, which I think is a bit of a failing, but such is life. 
So it goes to white. And now it's going to transition from white slowly back to green. So now we got that nice fade from green to white and then white back to green. So it's a transition. It's an action. Sometimes they call that an animation where we're transitioning from one thing to another. Okay, so now that we have this way of mixing color, we, let's look at some other mixes we can do. We can do a change angle. Now, we already have a spin to method, right? But the spin to method requires a speed. Suppose we want it to happen over a certain amount of time. So suppose we want our box over the full 20 seconds to be spinning and have it change its action, um, change its angle as it's changing its color. So that'd be kind of cool looking. So remember to do that. If we want action three to happen at the same time, and the method that we're affecting is uh, set Euler, not set, not Bueller. For those of you who watched, ever seen that movie, Euler, Euler, questions, and we're going to call the mix change angle. So we've now created that action based upon the method set Euler. We want to change the box's current angle. And we want to add that action. Let's have it happen at the start. By doing a pool equals one. Now remember, the default for the first two actions are pool 0. This is going to be pool 1, so it's going to happen in a different line. So it's going to happen at the same time as it's changing color. It should spin. Hopefully I typed everything right. And you can see it's spinning. It's doing it slowly. And now it's changing back to the green. So those two actions are happening at the same time. We have an animation where it's changing its angle and changing the color. And since I set the timing the same to both a total of 20 seconds, those actions really kind of are timed out nicely. They happen, uh, the, green, the green to white happens in 10 seconds and then the white to green happens in 10 seconds. So that whole thing takes 20 seconds and then the uh, turning is going to take 20 seconds. So I, I kind of like how that all works out. So that is how to use our add actions. Let's add in another couple mixes. Let's do a change size. Again, there is a built-in one for this. There is a built-in action for changing size. VizAct does have a um, to scale action, which will change from one scale to another given a certain speed. But again, I like doing things by time and this mix allows me to, to do things within a certain amount of time. So I'm going to set my scale to be 111. That's its starting scale. I could use the box.get scale, which would be 111. And then I'm going to make it five times as big. I'm going to do that in a half a second, and I'm going to do it with an ease in. And then I'm going to change it back to from five times as big to its normal size, one time sized. And I'm going to do that in a half a second. So those actions are going to take a half a second. So change size big, change size small. So we can go ahead and add those actions. I think we'll do that at the end. So I'm going to make new actions for uh, vizact.method. And this time the method we're affecting is the scale. So we're going to do set scale. We're going to change 
size big, and then the action 5. Chain size small. Okay, so I've added those two new mixes that will change the size. And then I have to add the actions. And we'll have that happen. Um, should we make it happen at the same time it's turning? Sure, why not? So it's going to happen in the same queue as um, the turning action. And then the color will happen with the turning action. Okay, so these three actions will happen in order. These two actions will happen in order. And then these two actions, the color changing actions, will happen at the same time as the sizing, as these actions in pool one. All happening on box. So let's take a look at our box and see what the heck we just did to our poor little box here. So it's changing its color. It's changing its angle. So it's rotating. It's changing the green, so it did its full rotation, almost, big, small, okay? So we had our action. A mix kind of gives Vizard the opportunity to fill in all the in-between frames that we would normally have to draw if we were doing this all step by step by step, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's what those visit actions actually do, fills in those things. And then the mix allows us to kind of create our own kind of actions uh, that we would, would want to build into our project. Now this whole add action thing can kind of get to be a pain in the neck. So suppose we wanted to do it a little bit differently. Suppose we want to create steps, step one, step two, step three, step four. So I'm going to get rid of all of these add actions. I'm going to get rid of these actions here. We're going to keep our mixes because we're going to use those. I'm going to use my mixes and build some new actions. And I'm going to call them steps. I'm going to do this really fast. Bang. There we go. I got 10 steps. So let's go through my steps here. Step one, I'm going to do a move two. So it's going to move to a particular location at a speed of one. Uh, step two, a move two. Step three, another move two. And then step four, a move two. Now these are all going to happen in order. None of these are going to happen at the same time. We're going to do a spin two, where it's going to turn at a speed of 20. I thought it might be interesting just to see how it compares to the mix versus the set Euler using the change angle, change angle, change angle, I can speak English. Uh, we're going to change the color again to white. Uh, we probably, maybe we'll go back at the end and change it back to um, green and maybe we'll speed it up a little bit because that was pretty long. 10 seconds was pretty long. Let's make this three seconds and we'll make this three seconds. There we go. And then maybe instead of this being 20 seconds, we'll make it three seconds because we want the stuff to happen a little bit faster. There we go. So those are my timings for those. I'm going to change the angle. I'm going to change the size just like we did before. And then I'm going to change the size back to small. And then I'm going to size two. There's that size two method I was telling you about that exists already inside of um, our program. So this act so we don't have to create our own action change size to big and change size to small we can use the size to and change the size to four times its size in here and put in a time but then i don't you know it's just letting us know there are different ways of doing things i'm going to create a step 11 in here 
and change our color back to green. Color to green. Okay, is that what I used that? Yep, color to green. There we go. Now, got all my steps laid out. Sometimes it's easier to see it this way because you have all the steps listed for our kind of animation sequence that we're going to do here. Unfortunately, again, they're all going to happen in order. They're not, none of them are going to happen at the same time. So I'm going to create my action now. So this is different. The action now is takes all of those um, methods and actions that I set up, and we're going to set them up into a sequence. So we're going to use VizAct, and it has this method called sequence. And we're going to put in our steps. Step 1, all the way through step 11, and I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have typed this out already. Ten. Step and you can change the order. 11. There we go. So now I have all of my steps. The last thing is to tell the box to actually run the action. Now, one of the powerful things of this is this last statement. This last statement can occur anywhere. I don't have to have it happen here. I could say it happens uh, after I grab it. So it could be an on-release action. Uh, it could be when something collides with it, it follows this action. So instead of using gravity, we could kind of create our own kind of weird action that happens when something collides with it. So this one command run action allows us to kind of set everything up and then wait for it to happen. So that is a major advantage versus the add action method in VizAct because the add action method in VizAct happens as soon as the program runs. This, if I don't put this command in here, you know, I'm just going to comment it out. If I don't put that in there, oops, then this sequence isn't going to run. Nothing is going to happen. So let's see what happens when we run it. And we can see our box is kind of moving around. doing its little rotation, changing its color, doing some more rotations, getting big and small. And finally, um, changing its size to four times the size and then fading back to green. So there's all of our actions and all of our steps. Let's just add this. I'm going to do this quickly to a on grab action so box run action won't happen until we actually grab the box so let me pause this and throw that all in okay let's take a look what i did real quick i added in my grabber i added this to the on release action so when i release the box so when i grab it and then release i'm going to run the action so it takes the event the thing that was released and then run action and takes the argument action. And then I just added in my mesh around my box and then my callback for my release event. I don't need to do a notify, I just need to grab it. And then here's my grabber object. Okay, so let's go ahead. And we can see the box, it's just sitting there. It's not doing anything. I'm gonna come down here I'm going to grab it. Now, I could actually move it anywhere I want it to. Let's put it to a different spot in the room. And when I release it, oh, now it's going to move around the room. Just like it did before, but it waited until I released it. So that's kind of cool, where we can set up a whole sequence of actions and then just have it sit and wait 
until we trigger it with some kind of event, whether it's a grab or a release or some kind of collide event, uh, as opposed to just adding the action and have the object do the action as soon as the program starts. So it's a different way of controlling our program and giving us some more power in what we do. So that's all I have for you today. I will see you next time.